The Raiders traded their first pick, Richard Seymour, a couple of years ago. So we know they're not afraid to deal and deal in a big way. Do you think that they might uh, deal again and maybe try to pick up a first rounder? going to be very tough, I mean, because the asking price is going to be high. I think two things have to fall in place for the Raiders to consider moving back into the first round. Number one, an NFL-ready, top-rated tackle such as Gabe Karimi has to fall further into the first round more than people think. The other thing is the purchase price is going to have to be right. You have to find a motivated seller because it's going to be very expensive to move up the 20 or so slots that it's going to take the Raiders to move back into the first round. And this is a draft where you can't trade veteran players, so they're going to have have to release a, a bunch of picks if they want to move back in. I think the bottom line is they don't go into the first round. Jason Campbell's going to be the starter quarterback. We're fairly confident about that. But behind him, not really much in the Raider roster. Tell us about some quarterbacks that could be available in the middle to late rounds that the Raiders might be interested in. And this is a good year to get some developmental quarterbacks. Two guys I'm going to name. One from Idaho, Nathan Enderley, a big, strong-arm passer. He can fire the ball down the field, really fits the, ver the vertical offense that the Raiders like to run. Uh, sometimes you don't know where the ball's going. He needs a lot of work on his fundamentals and uh, on his accuracy, but he's the kind of guy that you bring in and you develop behind Jason Campbell. Another guy, Jared Johnson of Texas A&M, a quarterback that was highly rated coming into the season by NFL scouts, but really had a poor campaign. He was benched in the middle of the season, did not react well to the off-season shoulder surgery that he had in the spring of 2010. He's got the physical skills. He just needs some development in time. Again, a guy that you bring in, maybe you stash him on the practice squad, and you see what you have two or three years down the road. The Raiders were successful in 2010 with the draft. In fact, if you take a look back, over the last couple of years, they've had some success in the draft. A few glaring exceptions, in your opinion. What has happened strategically that's allowed them to have success in the draft? Some insiders I've talked to have said that the coaching staff has got more involved in the selections, but I think there's been a fundamental change at the top of the organization. Rather than taking the athletes, they are selecting good football players, and you look no further than last year. Bruce Campbell, the fourth-round choice, who had an amazing combine workout with tremendous numbers. I think in years past, he probably believed, the Raiders would have probably taken him much earlier, but they let him slide, and they took good football players ahead of Bruce Campbell. Lamar Houston and Ed Valdir, the defensive line an offensive tackle and then they took Campbell who was good value in the fourth round trying to develop him into a starter as long as they stay that course taking good football players over the athletes the long-term health of the organization is looking good Tony thank you for your time we appreciate your thoughts as, as we look at the list of what uh, you probably consider these guys misses we are rejoined by Paul Gutierrez and we just heard from Tony Paul do you agree with his theory that there have been some changes in their philosophy. And not necessarily, because you look at this list, and, and a lot of these misses are from, you know, the, the, the past. And the other thing about that is Al Davis has always been and always will be a, a height, weight, speed kind of a guy. Um, and he's always going to draft those types of guys. And whether they pan out or not, that doesn't really matter to Al Davis. That's exactly who he's going to draft. There's one guy who stands out in that list, yeah. and there's little question that Jamarcus Russell always is on the lips of someone who wants to take a <laughs> shot at the Raiders. Is that the biggest miss of all time? It's the biggest miss, uh, biggest bust in NFL history. I think he's already surpassed Ryan Leaf in that category. But I have a hard time pinning all of that on the Raiders. The main reason is that if you recall, Jamarcus Russell coming out of LSU was the consensus number one overall draft pick. Anybody that was picking number one was going to take Jamarcus at that point. And if you go back and, and dig back a little deeper, you also will realize that Lane Kiffin, while he didn't necessarily want to draft him at that point, he had a different kind of plan. He was looking at Calvin Johnson and then taking Trent, uh, Trent Edwards later in the, in the draft. So he kind of had a different plan. Not necessarily consensus, number one, if you look at Lane Kiffin, but we see where Lane Kiffin ended up. Um, but Jamarcus, I, I think you got to give the Raiders a little bit of a pass on that one. For the Raiders, you're putting the building blocks together. They're hoping to make the playoffs in the near future. And Well, one of those building blocks that they thought they'd have for a while is on the offensive line, Robert Gallery. Where yeah. do things stand with him? Actually, you might want to, you could potentially put him on the, the list of misses as well because when he was drafted with the number two overall pick, he was supposed to be the left tackle uh, of the future, the franchise. He was going to be out there forever couldn't get comfortable out there. They moved him to right tackle, couldn't get comfortable there. He finally found a home at left guard, and he was playing at, an, at a Pro Bowl level there a couple of years ago. Then the injuries came. Then he wanted a lot of money, according to the Raiders. He wanted left tackle money uh, for playing left guard, and now he's gone. And um, I, I predict he's going to end up in Seattle with Tom Cable up there. Wow. Well, that's another hole you have yeah. to fill. So then as you look at that draft and you start to look at the offensive line, what about prospects? Who would fit anywhere? <laughs>
Delaware on that line for the Raiders. Well, as we said earlier in the show, and we could have really called this show, I guess, Lil Wiz 2.0 Raiders <laughs> Draft Watch. Uh, Stefan Wisniewski, to me, fits the bill for everything the Raiders want, everything they need. This is a kid that he represents everything the Raiders need on that offensive line. He's big, he's nasty, he can play in that position right off the bat. And then the defensive side, you've got a Namdi Asamoah question, so what about defensive back? Here's the other thing about that, is if Namdi Asamoah is gone, then you definitely have to look to, to refortify that position. The Raiders did draft a couple of young uh, cornerbacks last year, um, but if the Raiders don't have any confidence in those guys, then yeah, they're going to have to take another look in the, at the cornerback position. They do have a quarterback, yeah. Jason Campbell, but you can always look to improve for the future. Will the Raiders use the draft? as some type of tool for the future. Well, I'll tell you what, if Al Davis has already, ha already has Jason Campbell locked up, but he's in the last year of his contract. You got Locker in Washington. He's, he kind of fits that prototype of the big guy, stands tall in the pocket, uh, can throw the ball downfield. If he's still sitting there in the second round, if he falls all the way down to the Raiders at number 48, would not shock me at all if the Raiders scooped him up. Same thing with, with uh, Kaepernick from uh, UNR. Uh, he kind of reminds me of another former Raider that did not on all that fondly. Uh, Mark Wilson, he's kind of tall, got the big arm, not all that mobile. There he is. Big arm. This guy's tall and big. I do think he can move a little bit more, though. You're saying that Mark Wilson couldn't? I'm saying something <laughs> along those lines. There you have it. That's Paul Gutierrez. Right. You can read him on CSNCalifornia.com.